today we're going to look at an event study. For those unfamiliar with what an event study is, it's a look at abnormal returns in the share market due to a, um, an event like an earnings announcement, dividend announcement, uh, I mean dividend payout, uh, merger, acquisition, uh, uh, GDP figure announcement. Uh, there's almost an endless amount of things that you could possibly examine for an event study. I'm going to do a really simple one because it's an earnings announcement into Apple. Apple are the darling buds at the moment. I've personally never invested in them. Uh, not interested, but um, it's a good one to do because it's popular and uh, and their earnings is next Tuesday. So I've looked at leading up to uh, Friday, um, uh, Thursday actually it was the cutoff I looked at, and uh, there is abnormal returns, but they're not strong. Uh, but um, anyway, it's not so much about whether you can make a profit from this video, which is really is irrelevant. It's about showing you the techniques of how to do a, a um, event study on your own. Um, now these are the libraries. The library I use, there are I think one or two others. Uh, this is the simplest to use, uh, eStudy2. And you leave the library Magritte or Tidyverse because uh, we use pipes. Uh, those who use uh, uh, who've used R for a while will be familiar with pipes. I'll point them out when we come to them. Anyway, I've loaded the packages. I won't do that again. Now, the model I use is the mean adjusted returns model. Uh, I know many people, probably nearly all of you out there would expect that I use a beta adjusted sharp risk model sort of thing, you know, the standard uh, capital asset pricing model. Um, well, no, I don't. So I don't believe in the capital asset pricing model. And um, uh, uh, means are far more, a good mean estimate is far more important and are far more reliable than. Um, that is actually empirically proven then um, capital asset pricing model is very ineffective. The fact that it's uh, almost universally taught in all masters of business administration, even to me it was taught as an undergraduate, um, it's basically flogged to death and it is the cornerstone of modern quantity of finance but uh, you know things have moved on a lot from there. It, the only reason why lecturers and, and professors haven't is because it's it's easy to teach. The mathematics seems complex at first to students, but it's not. Um, it is when you first learn it, um, and the seeming seeming sophistication of the mathematics fools people to the fact that it's not very useful at all. Very very useless. So I use a very simple mean adjusted model, and uh, we load the library again. We get the tickers AAPL and QQQ, the NASDAQ ETF, to um, compare. And um, we get prices from the tickers, that's the tickers. Now we have that combined, you have to combine, combine them into a uh, uh, vector. It's not a vector, is it? Data table or something, anyway, but that's how you combine it. Um, and um, you get the prices. I'm looking from the from January till now. Today is actually the Sunday the 24th in Australia. It's Saturday the 22nd in America. Um, so Friday was the last day's trade. So it gets um, it only. It doesn't actually use Friday in the model. We get the rates, close. Let's just look at the model. We get security returns and the market model. Now I have to go into a bit of a discussion about this. 
Now you actually need he uses a quant mod and he puts wrappers over quant mod. So you actually need these phrases exactly as written. And these. It has to be exactly as written. You would think it's not flexible like quant mod or like most things. You actually have to use his his nomenclature, his descriptions, or else it won't work. Um, so as long as you've got that, um, so we'll run it, I suppose. I just run the whole thing. Oh. AAPL, there you go. There's AAPL, QQQ, there's the structure. Returns, we've applied the market model, mean adjusted. And the, the date cannot overlap with the uh, period when you want to uh, check whether there's been abnormal returns. So we stop the 12th and then we test from the 14th to the 21st. And we use the output parametric tests, list of returns, secured returns in the date is the 14th to the 20th. Uh, and we'll have I might just change that to 21, see if it'll go up there. I'll put it in 22, see what happens. Okay, we'll run it. Uh, that's a description of all the tests that don't run because I'm not using a single index market model and all those sorts of things. We'll just look at the model, here it is. Thursday, Friday, and Monday. Percentage, 100%. I'm not sure what. Yeah. Under the Brown and Warner's 1980 uh, um, model, it was significant at the. Um, on, uh, I believe that's Monday. At the 95% confidence level. And the Brown and Warner 98, 1985 event study uh, method. We'll see whether that, what we got there. We have no outliers there, but using a t-test, it is significant on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Which is funny how. I know that's Thursday, Friday of last week, Monday of this week, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it's funny how um, uh, Wednesday, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week have gone quiet, seeing as it's only two days till the earnings announcement. Um, make that of what you will. But as you can see, it's not a very difficult thing to do. It's really quite a powerful technique. It can be used in a million ways. And there is other methods you can use, but the mean 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 adjusted estimate is simple and quick for my purposes. Um, so I hope that's been helpful. And uh, yeah, so the data there. Um, okay, I I'll probably put this model on um, RPubs, and I'll put a link in the description of the video. Okay, thanks. Bye.